in any case, we'll we'll figure it out. But we're welcoming to the program Steve Carter from My Hannah. And My Hannah, I remember when this was first being introduced to me, I thought that Hannah was probably a little girl who inspired all this. It's not. It's H A N A, which stands for Help Advocate Navigator Assistant. Did I just get your attention? Isn't this something that you've been wanting? So Steve Carter is there. Hello, Steve. How are you? Steve, can you hear me? Nick Garofolo is here and I can hear you. Well, Nick, hello. I didn't know. How are you, How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, and uh, apparently Steve's Steve is still somewhere. backstage. I'm here now. Okay. Steve is there now. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So, Nick, tell me your name again. <clears throat> Nick Garofolo. Okay, and Steve is there. Gentlemen, please tell us what your titles are at My Hannah. Okay, so thank you for having us on. I, I really, really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and, and your audience and give you a little, you know, background on what HANA is and, and how we started. Um, I'll try and keep it in five minutes. Um, I've had a lifelong debilitating eye disease. In fact, three months ago, I was totally blind. And, and luckily right now I am seeing you uh, and I am seeing my screen. I'm, uh, I'm not 2020, but by all means I can go and, and, and do my work and enjoy myself again. But having a debilitating, multiple debilitating eye conditions over my lifetime, the challenges that it brought to me um, um, career in Wall Street, who, who. Um, my wife and I decided that we would venture on into, you know, a, a, another aspect of our life, our give back time. And we decided some years back that we wanted to help family caregivers with their struggles because we saw firsthand what ours were. So I, I have a sister-in-law who, who had a severely epileptic uh, daughter and I watched the challenges that she faced on a daily basis. And then there was my ex-sister-in-law, Joanne, who recently passed away at 59 and left uh, her son Mark behind, who was on the spectrum and 20 years old. And I looked at the challenges they faced every day and Diane and I decided that when we looked around at the large amounts of money pumped into the community and we saw still a lot of families without access to services due to lack of diagnosis or problems that states may have with giving uh, parents services, we decided that that status quo was not acceptable. So onward we went, you know, I, I, I embarked upon this journey with, with some friends and some people from my old career. And, and I've built up a great team now of Steve, Andy, Scott Badish, who was at ASA for years. And we found that the, the core um, wish of, of almost every parent that we spoke to in the community was knowing that they would have an independent future for their child. And with that said, we, we, we took a step back and said, well, how are we going to do it? And every business or solution starts with what's the problem? So the problem is a condition that has multiple comorbidities and that creates multiple challenges for a parent. Those challenges are, and, and I'm sure this is nothing surprising, but there's emotional challenges on a daily basis, financial challenges, and that many parents give up a job to stay home and take care of their child, and it creates a one-income, not two-income home. Educational um, parents sometimes don't have the time, and we found time is a problem, to educate themselves, let alone find what's really, really valuable education to them. Parents go on these encyclopedic, encyclopedic ventures on the internet and come away many, many times more confused with less knowledge, and that creates lack of confidence in making decisions. So we looked at that as an issue and, and the communal issue also parents sometimes feel alone so we looked at those four issues and we said how are we going to address it and this is what hana does to support parents um 
a lot of parents who don't have services or some that may not have all the services they want sometimes don't get access to you know some certain experts and 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 thought leaders in the space because maybe their insurance doesn't cover it they can't afford things you know out of pocket so we've are building what we believe is a world-class team of not just experts, I think parents get tired of hearing the term expert sometime, but also parents and people like Scott and, and Ben Sequenzio, who's on uh, the call here today, who have you know lived um, in this space for quite some time and bringing you know access to these people through workshops and webinars and curated content really is nothing new. A lot of people do that, but you know, we want to do it on a consistent basis and bring the best people we can forward. But more importantly, um, any business that creates content or knowledge, the most important content comes from the community, community generated content. So we will have a deep interaction with our com community and our members to extract from them. What are the hot button issues? What do they need to know about today? Is it back to school time? In September, is it coming to Easter, or is it Christmas, and how do we deal with the challenges that certain times look at COVID? We never expected this. So how to, how to address challenges at, at certain times of the year, the hot button issue. Um, on top of that, I, we built a navigation tool. I, I had many, many doctors over the years, and we know one of the biggest challenges of, of having a child on the spectrum is not just, okay, my son's on the spectrum. There's multiple, you know, comorbidities. And I think many of us know what they are, but sleep disorder, eating disorder, seizure disorder, I could just go on and on and on. And, but more importantly, those stakeholders, the clinical and behavioral stakeholders are not the only ones a parent interacts with over the lifetime of the journey. There's people from the financial industry, there could be attorneys, there could be uh, accountants. Um, there's obviously people in the education system. There's teachers and, and therapists in school and there's family members. So we built a tool called My Navigator, which gives parents the ability to build multiple, not a single, multiple uh, hyper-focused teams that parents can consistently stay connected with and collaborate with. And how do they do that? They do that through taking their vital documents, storing them in a HIPAA compliant document storage solution, which is quite easy to use, and sharing vital information through permissible access, giving team members access to the documents themselves. So sharing amongst all the clinical people, important documents, sharing amongst the legal and financial people, important documents. And I saw when my, my sister-in-law, Joanne, passed away, she left us one thing, two things, a box of papers and a child who didn't have a guardian. So, you know, these are firsthand problems that we've looked at. But the navigation tool also gives you the ability to collect video clips, audio clips, a very, you know, complex but easy to use calendar to keep track of whether it's a medical appointment, a social event or whatever it may be. But again, it's building an entire team to collaborate together from early intervention to age out. Lastly, we have, rather than giving people articles to use, we found that what was more effective is curriculum and courses, which we've seen from our research that parents will focus more to complete a course than just read an article and people walk away with a lot more confidence and knowledge and they feel a sense of, of victory to say um, when they do complete a course. So we have found that um, courses and curriculum create more confidence in parents. So, and last but not least, we talk you know, a little about financial. Um, giving people access to things that everybody has, democratization of access. Obviously, this is a term we hear often today, but we don't see a reason why a parent can have a will, trust, and guardianship. Sometimes the cost of that is five or $6,000. So we've embarked on our journey here and we've been successful starting to bring on teams of attorneys 
who will, you know, deliver these services at steep discounts, 40% and even 50%, because everybody should be entitled to have all those services. Again, look what happened with my sister-in-law. Um, Social Security, many parents don't know how to fill out their Social Security forms and they go and hire an attorney who charges $1,500, $2,000. Scott's setting up a team where we'll do that service for between $250, $300. And then lastly, IEP, parents sometimes can't afford access to a, a, a family consultant to help them better understand IEP. And we'll do that through our curriculum and some workshops and so forth. And then other access to other services that save parents money, discount cards in pharmacies for, for pharmaceuticals and discounts on other products and services that are new to the market. Florio, which is a sensory goggle, a mode of play, tippy talk, going to these companies and saying, hey, in the real world, you sell a product, you pay a commission to an Amazon or whoever it may be. We don't take commissions for any third party service. Our goal is to reach out to these people and say, hey, you know, we're trying to service a community that's in need here. So what we expect for you to be part of the My Honor solution is you deliver us your product to these parents at the lowest possible price that you can. So those are our four value props. And we believe that um, we address many, many uh, of the problems that, that parents face. So that's kind of a quick overview. And last thing, Hannah was a little Maltese, um, who was my little darling, who passed away last year. But mm -hmm. Hannah picked up on my, um, my needs that I couldn't see, trained herself. She knew what was happening. She knew to stop at a corner. She knew to stop at the stairs. And that's where Hannah came in here. Hannah, Hannah guided me. And she lives through this, and hopefully she guides many of the parents here. What a wonderful story. And I love that this was born out of seeing a need, right? Because that's the the mother of all good inventions. So I and I love that I because I, I I forgive me, I was saying Hannah, because I'm from upstate New York, but uh, Hannah, uh, uh, I love that. And again, I love that it it actually is named after something, but for those of you just tuning in. It also stands for Health Advocate Navigator Assistant. And I'm sorry that I have a dog that's barking. I apologize. But I want to get to these other two gentlemen that are here with us. And Steve, let's start with you. Introduce yourself as, and tell us what your title is at MyHana. Well, thank you, Shannon. Uh, Steve Carter, uh, the interim CEO at MyHana. I've been here for three years now. Uh, I've worked closely with Nick and really watched this product evolve over the years to our offering now, which I think, as Nick said, quite robust, uh, could help a number of families, including individuals that I know with children on the spectrum and uh, just a, a lot of great aspects of the product. And then I'd, I'd love to introduce uh, Ben Sequenzi as well. Ben? Hi, how you doing? Thank you so much for having us on. Um, yeah, I, um, I have a 37-year-old daughter who has autism and epilepsy. Um, I've been an advocate for uh, individuals with disabilities and autism for over 35 years. Uh, I was the president of the Autism Society of Florida for about 18 years. So I've been around it uh, as a um, helping families and also being one myself <laughs> and, and knowing what the, what the services are that are out there or not out there. And um, my hat, I came along, um, I, I got involved in the summer of 2020. Um, and a gentleman named Scott Baddish, who was the president of the National, had retired, and he contacted me. And at first, I was a little skeptical, but then I started really looking at what it offered, and I said, "Boy, I wish I had had this one." You know, my kid was going starting out in the system, and even later with some of the other things that we're going to be implementing, like the financial and the um, um, other things that uh, were brought up. So I don't know if you had other questions for me, but that's kind of who I am. <laughs> Yeah, well, I just, you know, and I think we, we've given our viewers a lot of information, but I kind of want to boil it just down, distill it down, because I think, as you've all said, this can be very overwhelming because there are so many, it's, it's like there's all these moving parts to getting treatment and helping and supporting anyone who has anything going on. But when we're talking about autism, 
it, it has so many arms and legs and different moving parts. And I know that a lot of parents are like, just keeping it together and getting to my appointments, keeping track of my appointments. This person needs this piece of paper. That person needs that piece of paper. And I have said for a long time that one of the biggest problems that caregivers have is keeping it all straight. And it's very hard to not drop a ball. Yes. And, and so what I love about this is that that's really what I, from looking at, and Scott Baddish introduced me to you guys and you know, we have to say thank you to Scott, but I, what I look at it and I go, oh, this is a great system for keeping the balls up in the air without having to exhaust someone so that it's all in one place. All, you know, we've been telling people for years, take all of your IEPs and your diagnoses and make a folder on your desktop so that you can send it to people, but then that computer wears out and where is it and why is it? So you guys have created this sort of, what I, tell me if I've got it right, this one where you can have it on, it's on your phone and, and you can, at a, at a click, be sharing this information, having people on your team share it with each other, uh, but it's really controlled by you. It's very customizable from what I can see. Am I in the neighborhood here? Shannon, you are 100% uh, correct. Uh, our proprietary tool, My Navigator, was developed uh, with that just in mind. You know, I look at my friends who, you know, every time they go to a doctor's appointment, they got two banker's boxes full of documents because they don't know what that person needs to see because they've just got, they're over, they've got too much information. And not only that, you know, it's the the need to retain documentation that it also is so tricky because there's forms that you got when the child was, you know, between three and five that you still need, at, you know, further down the line. So having uh, the My Navigator, which is a HIPAA secure document store solution that allows you to share within your care circle, which can be family members, uh, doctors, educators, practitioners, and then also financial. I know Nick touched upon it briefly, but now in this, you know, the world we live in now with, you know, conservatorship being such a big issue, you know, having that navigator be able to track and follow your child on a day-to-day -day basis where say something, God forbid, were to happen to you and a relative or someone else, you know, had to pick up care, you know exactly what that child is doing on a daily basis, you know, bedtimes, you know, food routines, you know, what causes outbursts. You know, you've got the IEPs for the past five years. You know what the teachers are saying. You know who their specialists are, and you know what data is shared with them. And being able to keep that in one location, uh, I believe now is essential. And we have the tools to do it now, so we should exploit it. Absolutely. Can I just tell you a brief story that I, you know, a year ago I was dealing with a parent who has two uh, adult sons on the autism spectrum, and she was having to move because in those horrible wildfires that we had in California, yep. in less than three minutes, that wildfire went through, took her entire house, every document she ever had about those young men and their diagnoses, and it was gone in a second. And she was, and she had to move because she had no house. So she moved and had to restart therapy someplace and it took her a year because the doctor that had diagnosed was had retired she didn't have the paperwork she had to go back to square one and reprove that these young men were on the autism spectrum and it was such an eye-opening experience watching this mom go through this and trying to help her to advocate to get the paperwork back that we started saying on the show it's so essential that you keep your documents and in, in more than one place or in a place that is safe so that alone is, as they say, worth the price of admission. When we're talking about yeah. my Hana, but you guys have so many things. Yeah, I go wish ahead. I would that's the first time I've heard a similar story, but it's not. I mean, when you think about the hurricanes uh, that ripped through the South, uh, you, we've actually talked to individuals who lost everything in an hour, again, back to step one, or in the interim trying to find, you know, what medications uh, we need to get, where are the prescriptions, doctors, all that is essential to be put in something like this. And, uh, you know, it, it again, people are beginning to move again. It's, you know, people are looking for other places to go and being able to take that with you instead of having to go through the basement and look for 15 different boxes where you don't know where anything is. You know, this is all at your fingertips right now. And, you know, I also love that you guys are about hooking parents up with resources. We've seen in COVID that, you know, 
bless these caregivers hearts because they had everything in place. They knew who was providing their ABA, their speech, their OT, the, you know, who their pediatrician was. And then suddenly in COVID, this ABA provider was not doing services, but this one was. And it was like the wild, wild west. And it still is. And I feel that as we get back to opening up, it's going to be even more so. And it, the, the word of the day is overwhelmed right? Because it's so easy to get overwhelmed. So I think that this is a great thing that you guys are doing. Let's talk a little bit about how people can connect and the different ways that they can connect. So if they're interested in more information, what's the best place for them to go, you guys? So I would just go to myhana, M-Y, and it's right in my name, myhana.org. Uh, that is uh, our product page, myhana.org. Uh, we've got some overview of the product. We've got some testimonials. Uh, the first thing you're going to see is a quick one-minute video on why we created my hub uh, and how it can help your family. Um, from there, we do offer a 30-day free trial. We are currently working with the Autism Society of America through their affiliates uh, to provide um, services for their community as well. Um, so uh, I, I encourage you, if you are a, a member of any of the affiliates, to, to reach out to that affiliate head and ask about my Hana. Uh, there's more information there. And then you could also just, uh, we've got a comment box or there's ways to contact us through there that I'm more than happy to, to help anyone who's interested in the product. Wonderful. And so for those of you who are listening in podcast, it's my M Y Hana, H A N A.org, my Hana.org. Now, if they want to do the Navigator, and I think every everyone needs to at least go and try the Navigator. This is what I'm advocating for today is that I think for some of you, this is exactly what you've been asking us. Like, how can I keep, it's the number one question I get from families is how do I survive this? How do I keep it all straight? How do I do that? They've created a tool for you, the Navigator. And, you know, you can do a 30-day free trial. I think that for a lot of you, at the end of the 30-day trial, you're going to go, how did I exist without this? I don't want to go back. Um, so I'm encouraging you to go and try it and see. Because, look, if there's one thing that you can do to ensure that your child gets more of, of the good things that you've worked so hard for them to get and lowers your stress, then that's a worthwhile thing. There's a very affordable, low cost monthly fee that comes after the 30 day. And, and I don't know if you're implying that you have discounts through certain organizations. Is that what you're implying, Steve? Um, no, we, we are working in conjunction with them right now. Um, uh, but, you know, there, there's definitely a possibility in the future. Um, okay. But as of right now, it's $19.99 a month, um, $199 annually. Uh, so you do get a discount if you purchase annually. But with that, you've got access to some of the thought leaders in uh, the autism space. Uh, we do weekly workshops, weekly support groups, uh, and we've got an ever-changing and evolving curriculum, which helps parents from detection through age out. And then also, uh, we've got a really interesting approach to explaining how to uh, get services and how to apply for aid which I think is so important right now because a lot of families, you know, you, you get, you, you find out that there's a possibility, there's detection, diagnosis, you go through, and there's so many services that people aren't aware of. I mean, even, even Scott, for instance, told stories of stuff and he was running uh, the ASA and wasn't aware of some of the things available. So imagine being able to tap individuals like that who have a wealth of knowledge and are doing curriculum, giving videos on how to fill out forms, how to apply for certain services, um, it, we find it to be uh, an amazing offering. Oh, the forms are, the forms will kill you faster than anything else. I think right? it, it thinks yeah. all of our battleship, right? I love to mix metaphors. Uh, but here's what I want to say to people, because I was thinking about this this morning. I know that a lot of you are like, like oh, $20 a month. I don't have it. I got methyl B12 shots. I've got, I've got to pay co-pays. But here's what I want to suggest to you is that you get 30 days free trial. And you're going to see at the end of 30 days, but my guess is that having this is going to save you way more than $20 a month because there is nothing more heart-wrenching than seeing a parent, a caregiver, relative who works hard to put a bunch of things in place. Like you can work so hard to get the IEP in place, but then if you can't find it to give it to the person who's, who's got to implement it, it doesn't matter that it's on a piece of paper. 
if you've worked hard to get ABA services in place, but then you miss one ABA appointment because the schedule was confusing, that costs you way more than $20, way more than $20. So my challenge to everybody that I want to encourage people, go do the 30-day trial and then ask yourself reasonably at the end of 30 days, do you think that this saved you $20 worth of heartache, stress, services, and just dropped bald. And I'm guessing you're going to find that the answer is going to be yes. And you're going to be happy and, and hang on to it. And then utilize all the other things that it offers. So that's, that's my suggestion. What do you guys think about that? Shannon, I, I love the, uh, the suggestion. I would encourage people to definitely go check it out. Um, it's, it's, it's a great product. It's taken uh, a number of years to uh, construct and, and get to where it is. And it continues to evolve from now. So the product you see now is not gonna be the same product in six months. We'll continue to improve. You know, my goal would be to build out some sort of TurboTax X kind of for filling out these forms where you fill out your profile, it pulls the information and then go back. But that's, hey, it's all in development. We're hoping to get there. But right now we do have an amazing offering, uh, the workshops, support groups, the curriculum, and then again, the My Navigator, which, which is a amazing piece of software in itself. Honestly, the forms, I just, it was a day before yesterday, I sat down with a mom because she, her son was getting ready to start services, but there was one document that she could not get filled out. And it was the thing that was preventing her child from getting services. So I said, I'm going to sit with you and we're going to go through it together. And we're not going to stop until we get it done. And, and, you know, it, it took a while. Those, the, those forms are overwhelming. And I was talking with somebody else about it. And once again, I was saying, you know, if, if we could figure out a code in insurance that we could code for being able to fill out paperwork, so many more people would have services. That's because I think, I think there's a lot of us in the community. Like I see a, a stack of papers that I have to fill out and I, uh, I want to run for the hills. I, right. When my, my son uh, applied for um, Medi-Cal and, and it took, like a team of people, we filled out the paperwork, got it in. And I was like, okay, he has Medi-Cal. When a year later, when the packet arrived, that was like, you got to refill it out every year. That thing never got filled out. And my son never had Medi-Cal again. Me, yeah. you know, and I, and, and, you know, I'm supposed to be somebody who knows a little bit more than the average bear. I couldn't do it. And I see you shaking your head, Ben. I, I, I'm imagining yeah, I, um... the same thing for you. Well, yes, and, and one of the things I wanted to chime in about is when you are sitting in a situation and your child's either just diagnosed or even after later down the road, the services from wherever you're trying to get them from take time to get implemented. You have, it's like if it's, if it's a newly diagnosed child, it can take three to six months before they're even evaluated to get into early steps in some of these other programs. So the one thing I like about uh, my Hana is that if a family finds out and they, they, they get to us, they can start looking at some of the things that they could be doing for their child. They can start to get in that mode of knowing and understanding and also doing some of the, you know, we have goals and curriculum and they can start with whatever issue is going on with behavioral or body training or whatever. Um, and they can, they can get a jump start on families that, that don't have it. Um, and while they're waiting for that to, you know, to become off or get off the waiting list, so to speak, because even after they get the services, when they go through different age levels and transitions, you know that you end up losing services or you get different services. I Man, I can't tell you how many times I've advocated for families with IEPs that, you know, they were in elementary school and they're getting speech therapy five times a day or five times a week, and they're getting OT three times a week, and they move to middle school, and now the middle school says, well, we only do speech therapy once every other week. And we only do OT once a month, you know. And so now the services that they were getting at school dwindling, families don't know necessarily how to traverse that to keep their services. So we can help with that because we're going to have education on IEPs and things like that. We're building that whole back end that's not even in there yet. Um, and then beyond that, if they're doing, if they have to go to private services, they can have their information that they've accumulated themselves and have it on hand, like you said, and be able to give it to that private therapist. The other thing that was always an issue was we had private therapy when my daughter was younger and the therapist at school is telling us the opposite of what she's, the private therapist is doing. And you never could get the two in a room 
because the school system doesn't want any private therapies and therapists in the meeting. You could bring them, but they didn't want, they basically poo-pooed it. Well, now you could actually get the two talking to each other that are actually, or communicating with each other. Same thing with a teacher. How many times you hear the family uh, has a situation happening at home and the teacher doesn't ever see it? So they can, you know, you can share that information. So that whole part of it, beyond the My Navigator, which to me, of all the things out there, that's the biggest differentiator between it and any other thing I've seen out there. Being able to go in one place, have all your care team together, be able to share that information. Like you said, the document, being able to store everything on the cloud and not have to worry about it being lost or where, where's that box or where's that piece of paper. Hell, I just had a situation. My daughter's still on my insurance because she was, I'm with the company for a lot of years. She's over 26. Well, you know what happens. They want to stop you from having coverage. And I had to go through just last week sending information to the new insurance company because they don't want to cover her who's been covered her whole life, you know, and you go through that. So having that ability to go grab that documentation and having it in, at hand instead of looking through a box in the garage that's 20 years old, you know. Exactly. And I'll tell you something, you know, I think we don't think about that when when our kids are newly diagnosed, we're, we're, we're in the moment we're in now, and that's overwhelming. But our kids, and it's a wonderful evolution, they get older. Uh, and we're thrilled about it. That's a good thing. But these things do come back up. And we do need to have them stored in a way that it's not in the garage and that it's not just on the computer that nobody knows where that computer went anymore. So right. I think this is an amazing endeavor, you guys. And I'm so grateful that you guys had the opportunity to be here and, and share this with our audience. And um, Nick, I especially love that this was born out of seeing the need to support caregivers out of because of what you went through. Um, I, I think that makes it you know, all the more uh, beautiful what you're doing because it, it sprung from seeing a need and filling a need. And we love that here. So again, the website to go to is myhana.org. That's myhana.org. We encourage you to go there. I encourage you to do the 30-day free trial and see, I think you're going to find that this is going to be something that's going to help you and help you to get to more services. It's essentially, you know, a lot of you are paying copay. That's that's uh, what this is monthly and you're paying it per visit. Um, I think that this is a worthwhile endeavor and I, I'm confident that if you try it for 30 days, you're gonna wanna keep it going. Gentlemen, thank you for all of your hard work and for being with us today. We're deeply appreciative of all the hard work that you guys have done. And we're thank thanking you, thank you. Badish for bringing us all together. Um, and that man's supposed to be retired. <laughs> but I, you know, I, could, I knew that he would never be able to retire, retire. Some people just aren't capable of doing that. And I think Scott's one of them, but nice to see the good work that he's doing while he's not retired. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shannon. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great week. Bye you guys. You take care. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.